as you can see that we have three potentiometers for example for testing in this device so let me show you how this gonna work now take a look here we have a potentiometer and we connect the vcc to this terminals vcc adc to the adc ground to the ground similarly for this potentiometer as well we do the same and for the third one we do the same uh, always the uh, you can see that adjustable pin of your potentiometer whichever it is as soon as the data sheet will go to the ADC pin the rest of the two can be VCC and ADC you can shuffle these two as well. So let me show you how this works. Let me open the terminal. So let's zoom in. Let's test the blue one because blue one is connected right now. So let me rotate it and see what happens. Now see that rotating in one direction increases the value. See 1.870, 1.923 1 it is increasing. I leave it it remains here like 2.001 it's now there i rotate it in the opposite direction the values decrease see it's decreasing and the minimum value that it will go is 0 volt and the maximum it will go in this setup is 5 volt if it is following this then it means that this potentiometer is okay so guys in this way you can test any potentiometer using this device hello guys welcome to learning microcontrollers in this video i will show you how we can use a pic 16 f 877 a microcontroller to make a potentiometer tester so let's get started so guys before we continue let me first introduce you to some basic formulary so first of all we will take into account the voltage uh, like in case of a normal potentiometer we use a dmm to calculate the resistances at the two points that if it is changing as per expectation at the variable pin then it means it's perfect now we will connect the variable pin to one of our adc pin and then we will check if the voltage applied is changing as per our expectation with the rotation of the knob then it's okay so for that we will need to find whatever the voltage at the adc pin for that we will need this formula so to get what is the voltage to the adc pin and we connect our variable pin of our potentiometer or a variable resistor to the adc pin so whatever the voltage coming over there we need to convert that value into a voltage so for that we will take into account whatever the value is converted like a 10 bit resolution adc will mean that if the voltage across a potentiometer is total 5 volt then at the center it will be like 2.5 volt then the converted adc value for a 10 bit adc will be 512 so that is what you will get into your microcontroller whatever the corresponding value is you multiply this by the ADC reference voltage that is the voltage you give to the ADC module and then guys you divide this by the ADC module resolution it can be 10 12 13 14 or 16 bit whatever it is now guys the voltage to ADC pin in our case will be like 5 volt I will be giving 5 volt to the pick microcontroller and to the potentiometer as well for testing purpose so uh, it will be very like whenever we will rotate the knob it will be in between 0 to 5 volt minimum 0 maximum 5 because we have only given 5 volt to the potentiometer. Now guys for the ADC reference voltage that is the uh, second value here. Uh, our ADC reference voltage will be 5 volt because we will power up the pick by 5 volt supply. And it will automatically power up the ADC module inside the pick with that 5 volt. So reference voltage is 5 volt. Now guys for the ADC module resolution pick 16F8 a has a 10 bit ADC module. So 2 power 10 is 1024 or values will be like from 0 to 1023. Now guys this formula now becomes for in for our case because we are using a pic 16 f 7 a with these settings it becomes this. So our converted ADC value will vary from 0 to 1023 and then uh, ADC reference voltage is constant 5 volt divided by 1024 that is also constant. So only thing that will be changing is this raw value coming from the uh, variable pin of the potentiometer. So against this this formula will act and we will get our voltage to ADC. And then we will display it on the screen to test if the potentiometer is working as per expectations or not. So let us uh, let me show you what type of potentiometers I am going to use here. I will use this one. I have that in my draw. Uh, you can use any potentiometer. All will work on this technique. See this one is easily available in the market. Then I am also going to use this. And then I am also going to use this. So I will use these three as example on this uh, device. So if these series are tested then you can test any other potentiometer. Now the only thing you have to know is that each potentiometer has three pins like uh, uh, one will be the power one will be the ground and one will be the adjustable pin you can see on the body that there is one three and two it is showing that the pin number two is the adjustable pin here so let me make it like it's vcc then we have ground and then we have the adc pin over here 
Then guys, for the other potentiometer here, uh, we have VCC. You have to check the body. Like in this case, it is like this. In my case, it is like this. This is the ADC pin. This is a VCC ground and ADC. Whichever potentiometer you have, you have to refer to its data sheet. For this, we know that VCC is the left one, ground is the right one, and center one is the ADC pin. You can shuffle VCC and ground. It will only change the, uh, like if when it goes clockwise, it uh, value is increasing. If you shuffle these two pins, then in the clockwise value will decrease. Rest will remain the same. Now, this potentiometer is very common. Uh, on its body, it is mentioned that the center pin is the variable pin. See, the arrowhead 1 and 2 are the power pin. You can shuffle these two. And he also shows here that clockwise, that it will go clockwise in this direction. So, VCC, ADC and ground pin like this. Left one VCC, center is ADC, right one is ground. You can shuffle these two. Only it will change the direction of rotation as compared to the voltage. Now, guys, these are the three potentiometers I am going to use here. So, let's uh, get to the uh, connections. So, it's very simple to make. You will need a 3-pin this terminal block. You can use a terminal block. You can use any other header for 3 pins. You will sold these 3 pins directly with the pick. And then from the upper, you will just change the potentiometer by inserting the wires. So, let me show how to connect it. So, you take 1 pin as a VCC, 1 as a ADC, 1 as a ground. As shown in the previous slide, that a potentiometer has only 3 pins, VCC, ADC and ground. Now, you connect the VCC with the VCC of the pick. ADC to any available ADC pin of the pick, I am going to use a pin number A0, ground with the ground of the pick like this. Now guys, uh, for the output, you can use a LCD, you can use OLED, you can use any other device like a touch screen. But in this tutorial, I will use a USB to TTL device. I will send the data to the computer or a laptop, whatever you prefer, and will display it on the serial monitor. The good thing is that you can also connect this device to a mobile phone as well using a OTG cable. It also works on that. You can simply download a terminal and use the OTG cable. Now guys, let's uh, do the wiring. So as you can see that USB to TTL device has like 6 pins. It's a CH340. You can use the FT232 as well or CP2021, whichever you prefer. Any USB to TTL device will do. See, it has 6 pins. It's a CH340, 5 volt, VCC, 3.3 volt, TX, RX and ground. Now whichever USB to TTL device you buy from the market or you have, they always have three pins in common, TX, RX and ground. These pins may differ. Some do have 3.3 volt, some do not have 3.3 volt. Some have VCC, some have only 5 volt pin, so it doesn't matter. Only pins that are needed are the TX, RX and ground because these three pins are in every USB to TTL device, whichever you take. So they will be there. So uh, we only going to need these three. So let's connect them. Connect the ground pin to the ground of the pick like this. For the RX pin, you will connect it to the TX pin of the pick. And the TX pin of the pick is the pin number 25, that is pin number C6. Now, TX pin of the USB to TTL device will go to the RX pin of the pick. And the RX pin of the pick is pin number C7, that is pin number 26, like this. In this way, our USB to TTL device is connected with the pick. We will not connect the 3.3 VC or CC or 5 volt pin because we will power up the CH340 device from the computer. Whenever you will insert it into the computer, computer will auto power up this device. So, when the rest of the circuit, we will power up using a picket 3.5. If you want to power up the rest of the circuit with this device, then once you have done the programming, then remove the picket 3 and connect the VCC pin to the VCC pin of your pick. In this way, computer will power up the whole circuit. But in my case, I will be using a picket 3. So, let us uh, uh, let me show you how to connect the potentiometers. For this potentiometer, simply you have VCC ground and ADC. They may differ depending upon the diagram on the circuit like diagram over here. So whatever the diagram is, you have to follow that diagram. Now guys, what I do is that I connect the VCC with the VCC, ground with the ground, ADC with the ADC. Now for this type of potentiometer, do the same. VCC with the VCC, ADC with the ADC. ADC is basically the variable pin of the potentiometer, whichever pin is the variable, ground with the ground. Now do for a third one. Again, the variable pin will go to the ADC. So there are three pins, VCC, ADC and ground, VCC to the VCC, variable pin to the ADC and ground to the ground like this. In this way, whichever potentiometer you want to test here, you have to do the same. First, you have to see the data sheet, uh, which pin is the uh, 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 like a variable pin, which pin is the variable pin. Then you connect that variable pin to the ADC pin, and rest of the pin you can connect to like VCC here, ground here. You can shuffle these two as well, doesn't matter. So simple as that. Now guys, let me introduce you to the hardware before we move on to the programming. So guys, this over here is the hardware. You can see that in the back, there is the PIC 16FA77A. This is the USB to TTL device already in action. Let me erase the code, whichever it is. So I had erased the code. Now you can see that it's on, although the PIC circuit is not powered up because uh, 
uh, it is getting power from the computer this is the computer pin, uh, port and this over here is our blue potentiometer and this is the knob type and this is the high precision type see all three are here so i will connect them i'm going to use this terminal here this one easy to use so i will simply uh, take out these wires and connect the other wires depending upon whichever i want to test first simple as that and you can use a three pin terminal like this one as well whichever you prefer so i'm going to use this one so let let's get to the programming now so guys this is our micro c4 pick so let's first make a file for our project i'm going to use a vision 7.2.0 you can use a higher vision as well higher is always better so click on file new new project this window pops up new project wizard click on next write the name of the project i write potentiometer usb to ttl tester tutorial learning microcontrollers that's the name i wrote this is the folder select the folder where you will create the files device which are you are going to use i am going to use the pic 16 f 7 a the clock to crystal connected to the pin number 13 and 14 of the pic that is a 20 megahertz crystal in my case so 20 click on next and finish so guys after this this window pops up this page over here press ctrl s to save your work like this then guys uh, and now we will write the code i will use the code from my previous video i will share the link to that video in the description as well uh, you will go to my channel home in the videos just go to the videos here you have this video adc value voltage conversion demo you go to that video i will share the link as well this is the link i will share this in the description so don't worry in the description of this video here you have this code so you copy it from here till here and to see how i wrote this code you can simply watch this video and this is a very detailed tutorial on this as well so let's go back i had copied the code just paste it inside it like this now it's pasted now select the libraries from the right now which libraries we were using we are we will need a uart library adc library for the potentiometer and then we will need the float library to display the values on the serial monitor to convert the float to strings so go to the right select these three libraries adc conversion and the uart library in the end like this now these libraries are selected click on build if the code is successfully built it's fine oh it's built that's great now guys here uh, we are sending the data to the serial terminal i simply increase the number of decimal places like i make them eight just for fun you can use the four as well but let's make it eight because it will show more decimal places because we have a high precision potentiometer as well so build the code the code is built now click on Packet 3 program, programming 2, click on file import hex file. This is the file we just created. Double click, click on write. Okay, the new file is being written. Let's get to the hardware and see what happens. So, this is the hardware and this is a new file being written. Okay, it's written. Okay, first of all, you can see that the blue LED this represents that the data is being sent. Data is being sent. So I am I have first of all connected this potentiometer, the bigger one. So let's see what is the values it is giving over the terminal. So go to your micro C4 pick, go to tools, USART terminal here. This window pops up. Here you will select the COM port on which the device is connected. When you connect the device for the first time, you will also install its driver and it will assign that device a port. And you will remember that COM from the device manager. Mine is COM8. And 9600 is the border as you can see that in the programming we have set the border to 9600 so it is 9600 and then uh, these are the uh, you can say defaults don't touch them click on connect okay it is connect okay we are getting the value like 3.945 4.121 4. because the wires are loose it is loose connections that i had made so they are that's why they are just changing for no reason okay let me fix this okay guys i have uh, uh, just connected the wires because they were loose so we are getting random values now see that i am using the screwdriver to rotate it 2.329 is the value we are getting i rotate it further see it is very smooth it's a high precision potentiometer so you see that the values do not change 
so it is 2.304 and it is not changing it's very linear now i rotate it further see it is going up it's a 10 ton potentiometer so it will go up to 10 tons see it is rotating and the values are changing as per our expectation now i go in the opposite direction it will increase so i go in the opposite direction see the values are increasing see the values are increasing when i go in the opposite direction so this is showing that the potentiometer is working fine as per our expectations now it's in the center it's the fifth term so it has total of 10 tons after that so when once you get to the maximum value it will become simply uh, 5 and the minimum value is 0 see it is increasing see that it is working as per our expectation so that's what we expected this potentiometer to do it's a very high precision potentiometer you can see that its values change very smoothly as you rotate it cannot jump directly to 5 volts so you have to rotate it yourself slowly see 4.2 the maximum will be the 5 volt because we have just given 5 volt to, to this potentiometer it cannot exceed the 5 volt so it is fine so see at 4.980 it's now stopped so this potentiometer is tested is fine if it was not working as per our expectations like this then it was faulty so let's check the minimum value as well so it has reached like 1.328 i had skipped the video i am bringing it down so so let's see that it is stop at zero okay we rotate it further now it's 1.3 after 10 you will see that it will not show zero point it will show 9.81 it means that it's you have to divide it by 10 simply now divided by 10 it is 0 0.9765 that's uh, that's how i had programmed it you can change the programming just use the ifls so it's 0 0.7226 right now it is going down this is to maintain the accuracy like 0 0.5029 now once it goes now it's 0 point so finally it's zero so it's working fine this potentiometer is okay so it is working as per our expectations now let's connect the other potentiometer so let me connect the other potentiometer so now guys i had connected this one the center one this potentiometer this one uh, the normal one this one i had connected this one now let's see what happens so we will not need the uh, screwdriver to rotate it so let me open the terminal now see that we are getting different values so let me move it ahead now see that we are getting different values <coughs> like 1.03 see this one is not very accurate that potentiometer is high precision now see 1.098 i rotate it in one direction see it's increasing it's now 1.6 and now it's 0 it's basically 0 0.1 so because below 1 it you have to divide it by 10 so you can do it in the programming but i have not done that so you can modify the code now guys i go to the opposite side now it will start increasing see 0 0.6 now it's 1.6 2.5 volt 2.9 volt now it's 3.3 volt 4.2 and finally it's 5 volt see this potentiometer is not a very precise potentiometer so it immediately reaches the value like maximum is going to 4.99 now i rotate it in the other direction see it's 4.7 4.3 4 3.6 2.6 volt and now it's 2.9 if i rotate in the other direction it will increase see it's increasing and in the opposite direction it's decreasing see this means that this potentiometer is 100 percent okay if it was not working as per our expectation then it was faulty now let's connect the third potentiometer and see what happens now i had connected this blue potentiometer the third one this one over here we will use a screwdriver to rotate it so let me open the terminal and see what happens so this is the terminal see it is also giving values like 2.421 whatever the position it is at now let me use a screwdriver now we rotate it see we are getting 2.421 now in one direction it is decreasing 2.3 it is also a very high precision potentiometer and has a total of 10 tons so i rotated further see it is going down down it will have total of 10 tons 2.187 2.163 see it is very precise 
but a difficult a bit difficult to use with hands see it is changing values see that i am rotating and it is going down changing values let let it go down see it is doing fine now i rotate it in the opposite direction it will increase the values will increase when in the opposite direction and they are increasing see when i go in the opposite direction they are increasing like 1.57 to 1.6 1.713 1.8 i leave it here they will remain here because that is the value adjacent to the resistance given by this potentiometer so this is simple as that guys you can test any potentiometer with this technique Uh, if you have any questions guys you can ask me in the comment i hope you guys learned something from this video and this is a very useful device you can make it using a screen as well i will also make a video in which i will use a 16 cross 2 lcd with this instead of using a usb to ttl device so that will be also good for you so guys if you have any questions you can ask in the comment the link to the video of the programming will be in the description you can open that video and you can learn the programming from there that's very detailed So guys I hope to see you in the next video we'll see you later goodbye and have a nice day